Today's episode is actually inspired by a show I watched on Netflix called How to Get Rich. It's hosted by Ramit Sethi, and I enjoyed every second of it. We're going to be talking about money in this episode. I know it can be scary, it can be heavy, or fun for some. Uh, no matter where you're at in life uh, with your journey with wealth, riches, money, debt, wherever you're at, just give this episode a listen and just know that you are not alone on your journey. And I want to just reassure you that everything's going to be okay. It's going to get better. It always does. Everything always works out. Uh, we just have to put in the time and effort and be straight up with it. So let's get started with this week's episode. Welcome back to the Transaction Care Podcast. I am your host and resident care coordinator, Lillian Hernandez, aka Lily Like the Flower, because we are learning and growing together. My goal with each episode is to demystify the business of real estate and leave you empowered to start your journey today. Head to transactioncarepodcast.com and join my TC community. It is the best way to stay in tune with, with not only this show, but also what's going on with me on a personal end, what's to come, products, you get first dibs on merch, digital downloads, access to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So you definitely want to join my TC community. Go to transactioncarepodcast.com. Link is in the description. So let's just jump straight into today's episode. We're talking all about money. And I know my journey with money, finances, financial literacy, education, all of that has been a roller coaster to say the least. <laughs> Let me know if you can if you, if you can relate to that. Um at a young age, I money wasn't a topic that was shied away from. We discussed it, but I feel like it, uh we only kind of just touched the surface. I was taught how to balance a checkbook, which is cool, but I don't think anyone uses that anymore. But I was taught to be mindful of my spending and to always, you know, list the things that I'm paying for and then add and subtract as I go, right? I think I think those are the fundamental basics of what a budget does or what it can do for you. But as I got older and, you know, my desire to be outside, to travel more, <clears throat> to show up, you know, looking fresh, have the latest shoes, you know, and, and also just kind of healing all the things I lacked from childhood and doing my best to obtain these things into adulthood kind of got me into a big mess. <laughs> I, I know I've briefly talked about buying my first car on here and how I sh I should not have purchased a $70,000 car right out the gate at the age of the tender age of 20. And, uh, but I did that anyway. I think it was 20, 21, 22, somewhere around that age. And um, that monthly bill, what I wasn't told or what I wasn't fully aware of or what I wasn't really ready to hear was that I need to budget more than just what the monthly bill is gonna cost, right? Uh, I was working full time. I had ended, you know, I stopped going to college and started to work full time. So to me, I'm like, well, I'm making money, so I'm going to spend it how I want to spend it. And my mom tried to stop me, but I didn't listen because I'm an adult. My money, I'll figure it out. I, Yeah, that was just one of my big money mistakes that I still, that still kind of haunts me to this day. Uh, I think we experience those hefty lessons for a reason. And it's important to learn from them and not make those same mistakes moving forward. Um, did I make more financial mistakes after that? Of course, but it was actually quitting my job and planning to do so that really kicked things into gear. So technically, I'm still kind of new to this way of living and this entrepreneurial way of spending my money because as many of you know, we can have a great month and then the following month could be cut in half or cut down to zero. So if you say you get a $10,000 month, that's awesome, right? But if the next following month you only make 2,000, 
you can't spend the same way you would the 10, you know, with a $10,000 mindset when you only earn 2000. So the mindset around money from an entrepreneurial perspective is, okay, how can I spread this out? Whether it's a big paycheck or a small paycheck and make it work for the next several months, the next several weeks. So I can anticipate, you know, hopefully the next month isn't as bad or as low, but I am prepared regardless. So going, you know, referencing back to when I first purchased my car, that bill was like $700. And I, I don't think I was making more than $3,000 a month. Uh, and that was before taxes were taken out. So I had, not only did I have a $700 car note, but I also had a really expensive car insurance. The car I got had a Hemi engine. So I was getting gas every week to fill up my tank or to at least get back and forth to work. <laughs> and eventually that car it became too much for me. I accumulated a lot of debt. I accumulated a lot of, um, I started missing payments. It was really bad. It was really bad. And it was the moment my car was repossessed that I realized, okay, something's got to, something's got to give, something's got to change. And I've been on this journey of just financial literacy and learning about myself and money and my habits and patterns and breaking those patterns whether they're negative, you know, reinforcing the positive ones, um, being open-minded to watching a Netflix special about money and getting excited to learn. And also know that, like I said, we're not alone in this. I think we all have experienced the highs and lows of money and, you know, having all of the money isn't what it's cut up to be either. My first year of business was probably my best financial year ever in life, but I didn't know how to handle it. And I didn't know how to handle the the volume of work, the de, the volume of the demand, you know, being working with so many different realtors, brokerages. I was being pulled in so many different directions that I got overwhelmed and burnt out. And I came to a conclusion where I was just like, you know what, if this is what it means to make a lot of money, I don't want it. And I could be, that could be very extreme. I'm learning to accept some of the gray areas in between my decisions, you know, and being okay with living within the gray, um, meaning just finding a happy medium. And for me, sometimes I can be, uh, no, well, most times I know I can be very extreme. It's either zero or a hundred. There's no in between, there's no two. So I'm either going to do this the same way, or I'm just going to stop. So I made the conscious decision to just slow down and take life from a, a, a wider lens and look at, you know, okay, I am making this much money. It's great, but am I even present for it? Am I enjoying it? You know, how have my habits changed or improved? And honestly, it was coming in and going out so quickly that I, I wasn't even aware of what I was doing. So one of my messages I love to constantly promote on my, on here, on YouTube, just in life in general, is to know your numbers. And a big part of that is, you know, everyone always says to create a budget. Well, what does that mean? You know, I think for anyone starting out is just accepting where you're at financially, whether you're making a lot of money, but it, you're still spending, you know, you're still living check to check, or maybe you need to make more money and your debt is just out of this world. Wherever you stand in life, I think it's just important to still be grateful, even in those, when you're in that position of scarcity or overflow, just stop and be grateful. Before you take out that piece of paper and pen or that Excel spreadsheet or hire a financial advisor, before you do any of that, I think it's important to know that you can still be grateful in these moments. And keep in mind, I am not a financial advisor. I am not a financial expert. I am just here to share my experience and reassure you that it's going to take time to get wherever you need to get and whatever your goals are. Um, but speaking to those, especially that may be struggling right now, you know, due to the market downturn or slow invent low inventory, maybe you're just not happy with your career and you need to pivot, but you just don't know how to because you need to have a steady paycheck. Don't worry. 
start let's start with gratitude you know and then we could start moving on to the the figures the money right so creating a budget is important and just tracking all of the money that comes in and out and i mean everything down to that pack of gum you buy once a week or once a month being that real with your spending and saying okay pack of gum two bucks these days three dollars five dollars let me make sure I can afford that you know or maybe I just need to start carrying my toothbrush and toothpaste around with me, with me every day or mouthwash floss right uh, coming up with more creative ways to not overspend but having a budget tracking all of your you know expenses and your income and just really breaking down and knowing like all right am I in the green or am I in the red am I just getting by where can I improve? Where can I cut back? And just know the cutbacks are temporary. I know it's hard to hear people say, well, just, you know, stop going to Starbucks or stop doing this and that. It's like, well, come on, like you still have to make room for joy, but you just can't have everything all at once. You can have everything. You just can't have it all at once. Remember that and prioritize what is important to you. And when I say prioritize, for me, I put myself first. I give myself a monthly budget and say, okay. And I'll be honest, I fi- as long as I have five hundred dollars in my in in my account, I'll just keep that in there until it gets down to zero, and then refresh it whether it's the next month or whenever I have the additional cash because that's all I really need for a long period of time. But that's because I've decreased my times of going out. Um, I have other accounts for taxes, for travel. You know, I use, I also use a credit card to gain the points. So the cash back that I get can either go to the future bill or to taking off money, you know, from a hotel for a trip. I also have family members that work within the industry. So I get discounts on hotels and things like that. So you just got to work with what you have, you know, find out if you know people within the industry and like I said, prioritize your expenses, but also be prioritizing your joy. You know, what do you love to do? Prioritize that into your budget. You know, whether it's like I mentioned before, I love playing basketball okay, so if I need a new pair of shoes, I'm going to budget that into my account so I can have more fun and be more safe when I'm playing basketball. Uh, I also love to travel. So I know, okay, well, how much money do I need to travel and how much money do I need to spend this month on my personal life? You know, and the $500, sometimes it doesn't even get touched. So I'll move it, I'll move it into other accounts. Um, I feel like I'm starting to ramble, but basically (laughs) prioritizing your expenses is important you know, and figuring out all right, what do I need to tackle first? And then give yourself a deadline. Okay, well, in the next six months, this is what success looks like to me. I pay off my smallest credit card, I pay off my biggest credit card, or um, I call the bank to consolidate all of my loans or to um, settle one of my credit cards because it's just begun, it's just become too overwhelming you know, settle the credit card. I know it doesn't look good when you cancel accounts, but if you are drowning, you got to do what you got to do and just kind of take that L in terms of it, how it looks on paper, but you're going to come out a lot more refreshed on in the long run, you know, but always be working on your habits how, and figuring out how you got there. Audit your life. How did you get into this position? You know, who are you trying to impress? Who are you trying to if that was the case, it's not for everyone. You know, we're all out here just surviving. But prioritizing your expenses, prioritizing your joy, pri- even prioritizing emergencies, money for the future. And don't feel like it has to be a thousand dollars every single time. There are moments I've transferred ten dollars into my brokerage account to buy a fractional uh, stock, and in the long run, that ten dollars could turn into a hundred a thousand who knows but there was something mentally that happened when I paid myself that it felt good before I you know before I even paid and and a lot of my bills are um on auto auto pay but there was something about paying myself that felt good 
that, okay, I'm not doing this. This isn't all in vain. I'm not just working to pay bills. And even though it was $10, something about that $10 still felt like 10,000. So that's why I, I promote, you know, start with gratitude. Like I'm grateful to have 10, 10 extra, 10 extra dollars this month to transfer and buy a, a cut of an Apple stock, right? Because in the long run, it's going to compound, it's going to grow. And I'll have that for whatever I need to in the future. And that could also mean you create a separate checking account where you put that $10 away. And that $10 may come in handy at the end of the month or in a year. You just never know. So don't think that saving or paying off debt has to be these extreme numbers. It could just be as small as a dollar, 10 cents, hundred dollars, whatever makes sense for you in that moment, but make it systematic, make it auto, auto automatic as well. Just know that a little goes a long way, you know, and then if you're struggling right now, I think it's important to also just avoid any unnecessary spending or purchases and do your best to use cash instead of credit. I know I get caught up in that whirlwind of, I need the points, I need the points. When it's like, okay, well, I think that credit card is, is getting a little too high. I have the cash. Let me just use cash instead, you know, and then just paying off your statement balance is important as well. And not just the minimum, but if that's all you can afford, do what you got to do, but also reevaluate okay, well, why am I only able to afford the minimum, but my credit card is maxed out? You know, there are things that are worth going into debt for. I don't promote debt. I don't promote you do that. <laughs> but for me, full transparency, um, instead of taking out a loan, I got a credit card and to pay for this course that I'm doing right now. So I'm getting the points. I'm paying it off with the credit card and then I'm eventually going to go back and pay the credit card down while I'm doing these courses. And while I'm not able to work as much right now, I'm taking that L in terms of debt, but I know I'm working towards mentally, physically, emotionally wrapping my head around like, okay, this debt is not scary. It's going to get paid for. This is how much I can afford to pay for pay off right now. And then in the future, as I build up my clientele, build up my new business ventures, all of that, it will get paid off. But I'm not going to force myself or beat myself up mentally or verbally because I have this debt on my back. It doesn't represent who I am as a person. It doesn't decrease my value as a person. It doesn't decrease my worth as a person. Can it be stressful, especially when it all adds up, you know, because bills come in fast. That's one thing about life is the bills do not stop. But I also know, I know my options. I know what I'm making. And I know whether it's a lot or a little that it needs, I need to factor in these things that I've accumulated. I need to spread out my wealth throughout time. Like, okay, I like to have reserves up to one to three months. That is my comfy zone. That is my safe zone. Um, so wrapping your mind around, okay, well, Maybe the savings I need to start saving for are just for reserves, just to have a month's worth of cushion in my account that just stays there, that I don't touch. It's just there to like, just in case, or just for my own personal confidence. And that can also be a part of planning for the future. And whatever financial goals you have with savings or retirement or you want to buy a new car, you want to buy a home. There's so many things to be saving for and it can get exhausting. It can, it can get overwhelming, uh, but it is all possible. And you have more power than you may even know around this whole situation. And there are a lot of options, especially when you are in debt. The people you owe just want some money. They just want to know that you are going to be paying them back something. And most will work with you and negotiate a deal so you don't have to pay everything that you necessarily owe like I said you might have to take the L on paper and it may affect if you were looking to buy a home or to buy a car or get a loan or whatever the case may be but just study 
and wherever you're at, there are different methods to accomplishing and getting rid of that. Or if you're someone that just came into a lot of money, but you still have those old spending habits, or you still have that scarcity mentality, like, oh, it's all going to go away. It's all going to go away. This isn't real. This isn't, this is too much, or I just need to spend it all so I can know what it's like to have all these things I wish I had in the past, right? Like, I, I think it's important to like, get that out of your system. But I think once you come to back to the surface, you'll realize, okay, <sighs> yeah, I don't, this isn't, this isn't the lifestyle I want to continue living. Like I want to enjoy, you know, my affluence and my riches and my wealth and stuff like that. But I also want it to last, you know, how can I look at this from a bigger point of view? So just take a step back wherever you're at in life financially, whether, like I said, you you have a lot of money right now, or you have little, or you just have enough. Think about the, the habits that you have. And if you also have to write all those down and see like, okay, good habits, bad habits, what are we keeping? What are we letting go? And how do I fix this? You know, one of the questions I love asking myself every day is like, what would make today successful? And I'm starting to apply that with my finances, my education, this podcast, and, and it works. So for anyone out there struggling with their finances, like I said, whether you are in overflow or in extreme debt or somewhere in the middle, we all have something that we can, in areas that we can improve in, but just know that you are not alone. And this is a topic that I will continue to talk about, but I just wanted to open up the dialogue this week and, you know, kind of share my journey with what's going on. And like I said, this is inspired by the show, How to Get Rich on Netflix. Netflix, if you're watching or listening to this, sponsor me, let's work together, let's do something. Um, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, it's hosted by Ramit Sethi. He's dope. Go check out his YouTube channel. Um, other financial literacy tools that I can share with you all is the book, Get Good With Money by the budget Nista. She is someone that I've been following for almost a decade now, I think. And she's been a tremendous help. She has so many free resources online. She has books that you can buy, workbooks. Um, she has a community of people that she serves and provides information and provides tools and resources, um, seminars, webinars, all of those things. Um, but she's a great resource. Uh, Ramit's YouTube channel as well is great. He interviews couples, people that um, make a lot of money, but they struggle with the power dynamics within relationships. Like, well, I don't feel worthy because my wife makes $500,000 a year and I'm just at home with the kids. Like that was one episode I just watched on his YouTube channel. And the husband just didn't know what his definition of success was. He was basing it off of the of societal norms and, and narratives and constructs that were built into him and told to him from birth, but he never had his own foundation or definitions of success. So it was hard for him to grapple the fact that his wife was making more money when she was like, no, this is our money. I want to enjoy it. I want to be able to travel and get a massage in a different country with you. I don't want to have to go through this journey alone or feel guilty, you know, when we are a team. And he just couldn't fathom that. And um, it was interesting. So this just goes into play again. We are not alone in this situation. And even having all of the money that you could ever dream of may not be all it's chalked up to be because we're not able to have those conversations when we, you know, before we get it, you know, what our, our financial situations can change overnight for the good or bad. And it's okay to prepare for both. You know, we don't have, but we don't also have to live in those spaces of, well, what if, what if, you know, how do I do this if this happens? But it's like, do your best to stay grounded, stay present and have a gratitude. I'm grateful for every penny that I find on the floor that I'm not going to ignore money. I'm not going to ignore a penny or, you know, every penny that is that is in my bank account, even during the months where, there aren't that many closings coming in, or maybe I don't know if I'm going to have one for next month, whatever the case may be. I've done so much work mentally to say, okay, well, 
we're just not going to have this. We're just not going to have it this month. So let me slow down. I'm going to have to say no to some outings. I'm going to have to say no, or maybe, you know, instead of going out, tell people to come here, come to me, you know, or let's do a zoom. Cause ultimately it's all about quality time, not the quantity. It's all about the quality. And I can get that same experience from the comfort of my home, from a zoom call, FaceTime, you know, I'm, but I'm also a simple person. I love music. So I have my speakers, I have music, I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna dance, I'm gonna watch a movie or a documentary on money. <laughs> and to me, that brings me joy. So a part of this is not just knowing your numbers, but knowing yourself and, you know, treating yourself as often as you need to, but also being realistic with what, what you're spending on and the frequency of that and how fast or slow that the income is coming in, you know. Do your best to step back and have a bird's eye view of the situation and you'll have a little bit more confidence as well. At least that's what worked for me. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a banker. I don't, I'm not being sponsored by anyone to talk about this. This is just something money is a topic that many of us don't talk about. And I'm not afraid to talk about that. I'm open to being the person that you are comfortable with talking about it and this is going to be one of many conversations if you've noticed I've weaved this topic into my podcast as well when I have guests on the show you know I like to know what, what is their financial journey who told them about money where did why did you start a business and you know who told you that th that was the route to go or what made you confident about making that decision how are you managing your money right now? How are you managing the overflow or the underflow? Is underflow a word? <laughs> but either way, what I'm getting at is the topic and discussion of money does not have to be scary. And you do not have to feel alone on this journey or wherever you're at in life. The more honest you are with your situation, the more ease will actually come to you. It'll be a lot more a lot less stressful when you just face it. The big scary monster may not even be that scary. I've had mountains and mountains of debt, and I still st I faced it head on, strong, and accepted. All right, the next year I'm just gonna focus on this. One year compared to the rest of my life, piece of cake, piece of cake. So wherever you're at in life, if you need to talk this out, message me, set up a discovery call. I'm more than willing to discuss it. Um, if you want to build a long-term financial um, discussion uh, and build a long-term working relationship where we discuss this and, you know, I coach you through things, let me know. I'm available. You know, we can work something out. I'll work. We'll work. We'll work something out. We'll figure it out together and take it from there. So with all of that said, I hope this resonates with you. And if you need someone to share your journey with, I will keep all of your information private. You know, if you just need to blurt it out, if you just need to vent, email me, message me, DM me on social media at Transaction Care across all social media platforms. Don't hold on to, don't hold on to the stress. Let it go. Let it go. Come up with a plan to take it down bit by bit or chunk by chunk wh wherever you're at in life just know you're not alone I got your back and if you want to come on the show as well and talk about your money journey your money experience and how you are managing your wealth at this point you know we are all wealthy I should have said this in the beginning but wealth is more than money when I say care for yourself care for your wealth I'm talking about the wealth of your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul, your purpose, your drive, your ambition, how you're staying uplifted, and much more. And then money. First and foremost, it's all about you. I've come across, I've seen a lot of money. I've been around people with a lot of money. And to me, my mental health is, is wealth point blank period so work on you and everything else will fall into place as long as you are con con continuously and consistently showing up for you and you have the courage to face those 
quote unquote demons or, or struggles or whatever you're dealing with, you know, you have the power to change your circumstances. You have so much power than you even realize or recognize. So do what you got to do. I'm here. I'm available, at, you know, to talk it out, to work with you. If you need more book recommendations, YouTube recommendations, I got them. There's so much more. I'll, I'll work on a blog and, and put it all in there. And I'm definitely going to be interviewing more people on the show based around this topic. A lot of my solo episodes are also intentional in terms of the topics that will be discussed on this show as well. So if there is a topic you want me to discuss, or if there was something that resonated with you in this episode that you want me to expand on and elaborate and go deeper with, I definitely will. Let me know. Go to transactioncarepodcast.com. Join my TC community. That is the best way to have access to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis because I do send out my weekly newsletter. Sometimes I'll be in your inbox more than once a week if I'm promoting something or if I really am excited about something or if I want you to hear this podcast right away, you will be getting more than one email. But for the most part, consistently one email a week. I don't like to, to bug, but that is also the best way to reach me is to have access to my calendars, like I said. And moving forward, if there is a topic you want me to discuss on the show or a person you want me to interview, like Oprah, Beyonce, just to name a few, just no big, no big, right? <laughs> Let me know. I'm loving doing this show. I'm having so much fun and more money talks to come. Stay tuned. Uh, but until then, this has been another episode of Transaction Care, the podcast. I'm your host and resident care coordinator, Lillian Hernandez, aka Lily Like the Flower, because we are learning and growing together. My goal with each episode is to demystify the business of real estate and just empower you to start your journey today. Wherever you are at in life, you have the power to succeed, to do great things, to overcome any hurdles that you are experiencing right now. So with all that said, I'm giving you the keys. There are no gatekeepers here. Care for yourself. Care for your wealth. Your time is worth it. Let's coordinate. Talk soon.